The new live-action Mulan remake is the first major big-budget Hollywood theater blockbuster to be released digitally due to these tough times. Being the genuine good guys that they are, Disney saw that people were suffering all around the globe and decided to bring some happiness to the world by making this movie easily accessible to everyone. All you had to do to watch Mulan was subscribe to their streaming service and live in a specific geographical location and pay an extra $30 and pledge your soul eternally to the Great Ancient One. And so, with all those requirement boxes you have to check to be able to see this thing, what you're about to see better not be another pile of corporate trash. And fortunately, it isn't. Overall, Mulan does come off as a very competent film. Maybe my viewpoint is somewhat affected by the fact that my last video was about Gods of Egypt, aka potentially the worst Hollywood movie ever made, but aside from the occasional studio voiceover exposition, there's really nothing especially bad or wrong here. Just the opposite, there's actually some really great stuff, like the new witch character who is basically like a dark anti-theme version of Mulan. We don't get much of her, but what we do get is fantastic. Her whole life she's been shunned and outcasted just because she's a powerful female warrior, which has led her on a very dark, destructive journey. But now that she witnesses Mulan's journey, she realizes that even though there's no more hope for herself, it's not yet too late for others like her, and so she chooses to change. However, despite genuinely good stuff like this, despite being perfectly adequate, the film doesn't really leave a mark either. Like you sit there watching this thing for two hours and then when you reach the ending credits, the strongest emotional reaction you're gonna have most likely is meh. As in, despite all its competency, all Mulan rises up to be is an okay, uninspired Hollywood remake that you're gonna forget by the next morning and never need to see or think about again. AKA, definitely not worth your soul or your $30. And so obviously, the question then is, how come? If we have a competently made, perfectly adequate $200 million film, why is average the highest level it can reach? What exactly is holding it back from becoming more? Let's try to find out. Let's take a look at Mulan and figure out what exactly it does or doesn't do that prevents it from reaching its full potential and making a lasting impression. Here's how to create a major big budget cinematic meh. The first major forgettability problem with Mulan is that the thematic question and message that serve not only as its backbone but also as its beating heart kinda just end up falling flat. Essentially, the core theme here is all about women learning to reveal their true inner self to unlock their full potential. And if this sounds familiar, it's because it is. Because it's been the core theme in pretty much every female-led Hollywood blockbuster released in the last few years. Control your impulses. Stop using this, start using this. Look, Elena, you're much too smart to keep pushing this forward, aren't you? And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with this theme of female empowerment in of itself. If you can find a smart new metaphorical way to explore it, it can be really powerful. But the reason this theme in Mulan has no power whatsoever is because it's handled in such an obvious two-dimensional on-the-nose way. Basically, it goes like this. We open with Mulan being a rowdy little girl and then just happening to overhear her parents talk about the problems her rowdy behavior is causing. That she has to learn to grow up to be a proper woman before it's too late. And that's essentially the thematic message we are pushed, that a good proper woman is always silent and composed and obedient. A daughter brings honor through marriage. But she is for warriors, not daughters. Bring women into camp or consorting with women in any way. Death. Armistice. There's a woman. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> But then it ultimately turns out that this message is just a negative anti-theme and that the real true thematic answer is that a woman should grow up to be whatever it is they truly are. And it's like, no sh**. Of course women shouldn't try to fit in this one specific box assigned to them. Of course they should express themselves. Of course they can be warriors if they so choose. That's pretty obvious. And because it is so obvious, the whole thing just comes off as nothing. As an example, look at the third Dragons movie. We know that the core theme here is about love. You're so 
love of my life. Fresh off his first date. Now he's love crazed. But with love comes loss. And risking everyone we love. I will destroy everything you love. Love, love, love. Love. But we don't know in what way. For a long time, we might think that love means that you support and stick by your friends and family no matter what. But then we ultimately find out that no, real love is learning to let your friends and family go when it's time. And because it's on our journey where we find this out, that's why it carries power. That's why it hits you and leaves a mark. But in Mulan, we find out nothing. We already know the final answer to the core thematic question five minutes in. And so for two hours, we're just waiting to get it. And when we finally do, it doesn't carry any power. It doesn't hit you or leave anything. All it does is make you say, yeah. Hello, old friend. If you're here to discipline Mulan, you have to get past me. Oh wow, the dad defends her daughter after she selflessly put herself at risk to save his life. What a great good guy dad. The other half of this issue is that the theme is handled in a very shallow way where the other negative side of it is never made believable. Just like was the case in Charlie's Angels, this movie never even tries to establish a logical reason why women are treated like this, why women aren't allowed to be warriors. It is verbally stated that, oh, if any warrior brings a female to this camp, that's a death penalty. And so from now on, there's this constant threat of Mulan being found out as a female warrior. But it just doesn't work. It's just not believable. There is nobody in the audience who actually buys that this good guy commander would ever hurt Mulan just because she's a woman. Because doing so makes no logical sense. Because no logic is ever given. I'm sure this was real at the time, but it's no longer realistic. Courageous. A courageous woman. Yes. <laughs> And she has a sense of humor. She's also smart. If you really wanted to make this work, you would have put in the work. For example, let's say that the emperor's ancestor used to have female warriors as his guards, until one day those warriors then betrayed and killed him. Obviously, there would be some good explanation for this that we eventually find out, but all that the current emperor can see is his ancestor having been betrayed and killed by female warriors. And that's why female warriors are deemed dangerous and bad. That's why they and everyone associating with them will be executed. That's why the commander would have no choice but to execute Mulan. Show a scene where soldier is having fun with a woman and then boom, executed. Oh, but Filmento, this is a Disney movie. This would be way too dark and disturbing and Skip. Have the ending be about Mulan making the Emperor learn that female warriors are just as worthy as male warriors. You know, instead of having the Emperor already think this way upon first seeing Mulan, which only makes it confusing as to why his country then shuns female warriors in the first place. All I'm saying is, if you want to make a movie about a strong, empowered female hero, then maybe have the hero be strong enough to do something that hasn't already been done by all others years or even decades ago. Secondly, anytime this movie gets even close to new boundaries that haven't already been fully explored, it doesn't have the guts to actually push them and instead always chooses the easy way out. Like since this movie is all about a woman trying to fit in in a man's world, what it quickly made me realize is that there are a bunch of pretty sizable inherent obstacles that come with that. Take this early moment in the training camp for example. Told you to line up for showers. Showers? For most of the opening, I'd been pretty bored. But when Mulan enters the training camp tent to see all these dudes whipping off their clothes in preparation for a mandatory shower, that's when my attention jumped from 20% up to 120%. Because now it hit me that, oh yeah, she's physically unlike everyone else. This is actually a problem that wasn't explored in the original film. And it's a big problem. In an instant, all the feelings of conflict and tension and dread and anxiety went through the roof and this film was becoming not only powerful, but pretty goddamn incredible. Until it then decided not to be that. Showers? Showers! You lot stink! 
and I need a volunteer for night guard duty. Martha! I mean, I volunteer, sir. That was easy. That's right, instead of using the inherent potential of this scene and section and forcing Mulan to overcome this major obstacle of physically not fitting in with those around her, the movie just gives her a free pass and skips over the whole thing. And that really sucks, because all this potential is just wasted. You had a prime opportunity to explore something new with very smart timely metaphors for physical difference and transgender dilemmas and so on so on. There was so much inherent power here to mine. But I guess since all that happened, hasn't yet been explored enough to be deemed fully safe, you'd rather stick to the same old shallow female empowerment stuff because that has been explored and is safe, because you'd rather walk in the footsteps of others instead of actually paving a new path for others yourself. Report to the barracks immediately. Immediately. Disgrace. Even more so, despite this film being built upon the problem of not fitting in physically, it never seems to dare make that problem a real thing that we actually have to confront and overcome. It's verbally hinted that Mulan will be executed if they find out she's a woman, but then nothing ever happens to make this threat real. Nobody is ever executed. Even when she is revealed as a woman, everyone's just like, okay. Because of course our Disney heroes wouldn't ever behave in any way that isn't heroic. Juan Mulan. Your actions have brought disgrace and dishonor to this regiment, to this kingdom, and to your own family. You will lead us as we ride to the Imperial City. There's not a single character in this camp or in this movie with a flaw of actually despising female soldiers who would actually become a real threat to Mulan. Anytime there's a problem relating to this topic, it's always something verbal that might potentially maybe sometime happen. You're a good man. Perhaps one day you could accompany me to my village. Well, I will introduce you to my daughter. I look forward to seeing your father's face when you give him this news. One day, in the future, but not right now. And in general, the movie never pushes Mulan to make tough choices due to her being physically different. Take this leg scene for example. Mulan is washing herself alone when her friend from the camp then suddenly shows up to join her. And now it's like, oh crap, she has to find a way to get rid of him before he finds out the truth. And to do that, to overcome this obstacle, she has to make a tough choice. She has to do something she doesn't want to do, something that will cost her. But then all that happens is this. Arjun, we started off on the wrong foot. Can we be friends? I'm not your friend. Leave me alone. Very well. Meh. Yeah, Mulan just says go away and then the dude just goes away. That's it. The relationship doesn't break because of what she does. She doesn't ever have to struggle with what she did. She never has to pay a price. Next time they see each other, already as good of friends as before. No problem. And that is the problem. For a film all about the obstacle of being a woman in a man's world, it sure doesn't try to make being a woman in a man's world into an obstacle. <laughs> She must get through. Everything is easy, everything is free, which is why everything feels like just two hours of forgettable vanilla. Thirdly, there's a problem I've touched on before. The fact that this movie already exists and that there's really nothing new and worthy about it that would make it deserving of having been made. To be fair, they did make some new additions, like The Witch for example. Fantastic. But that's not enough. You can't just add one character and a couple superficial changes and call it a day. Because at the end of the day, it's still the same movie. We know exactly what's coming. We know exactly how it's coming. We know exactly the way everything is gonna play play out. Take that back. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> We have Mulan messing up her meat with the matchmaker that leads her to denounce her. We have the soldiers coming in to draft one man per family. We have Mulan stealing her dad's stuff and leaving in the night. Mulan trying to effortlessly fit in in a training camp. A midsection battle ending in a Deus Ex Machina snowfall. An ending fight to save the good guy Emperor. It all unfolds just like in the original. The only real change comes from the stuff that you cut out. No songs, no animal characters, none of the cool flashy locations and situations. Ah! 
Like I said, whenever familiar plot beats are handled in a new worthy way, those moments are great, those are the highlights of the film. But they're really few and far between. Most of the time when there is an opportunity for something new, it just gets skipped over. Most of the time, this thing is just a watered down rehash of the original where we always know what's gonna happen and how. And because we always know what's gonna happen and how, it's not interesting to watch, it's just kinda pointlessly boring. Like this commander interrogation scene for example. Watson, report the commander tongue. It seems you've been hiding something. Commander? I sensed it the moment I met you. And now I'm sure. Essentially, the scene and sequence is built on the threat of the commander having found out Mulan's identity. Now, obviously, we already talked about why there is no threat to begin with, but let's just pretend there is. Even so, this scene still doesn't work. There still is no conflict or tension or dread or anything in it. Because we already know that the commander hasn't actually found out Mulan's identity. Because that doesn't happen until after the snowfall battle. And the only way to fix this issue is to give us something new and worse. Worthy. Don't change and ruin the story that makes the original special, but change the way that original story plays out. Instead of just having Mulan leave at night to take her father's place, don't. Have the dad already have left with the soldiers, only for Mulan to then experience something that makes her realize the truth and chase after him to look for a way to secretly replace him. Or better, have the dad catch Mulan in the act as she's stealing his armor which turns the scene on its head and makes it more about external conflict in addition to just internal conflict. As in this point of no return plot beat has the same purpose and result but plays out differently. Instead of revealing Mulan's identity to everyone only after the snow battle, create a new flawed woman-hating soldier character who finds out her identity way earlier, which makes him at least a momentary antagonist and forces Mulan to deal with that problem. As in, you don't have to make up a brand new story, all you have to do is find new ways to tell the old one. Because by doing so, by going through those same major ideas, iconic plot beats but in a new unseen way, you always keep the audience on its toes and invested. Because like I've mentioned before, what's the point in you shelling out 200 million dollars for something that already exists? What's the point in me paying 30 dollars for something that already exists? What is my incentive to invest in something that I've already invested in? There is none. And that's why the whole thing comes off as one big cinematic meh.